Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In uh, this session, I shall be explaining you about the different states of a process. First of all, I would like to tell that in the previous session, when I listed out the attributes of a process, there I have missed one attribute, which is an important attribute. The name of the attribute is process state. That means a process will be in either the ready state or the block state or the running state. So that information will also get included in the PCB. That information is missed. Please include that information there in the attributes and with respect to that, that is in continuation with the, with the process state, actually you have to learn the complete process state diagram. Students, you know this, there will be a question for 4 to 5 marks, explain the process state diagram or explain the process, different states of a process with an inked diagram. Then you are going to sketch this and give the explanation. So I shall give you the explanation. First of all, look here, in this particular diagram, these are the different states, which are the states one is running, another is ready, the third one is blocked. Now what now to explain the states, let me start writing first with ready, then running. Why I am following this sequence, that also I will tell you for the explanation purpose. So I will just write down these are the three different states that are shown. Now a process, so till now you know that a process for execution will be first brought into the main memory and from there that the CPU will have access to start executing the process. So that process will be in one of these states at any point of time, which state ready state or it can be in the running state or it can be in the block state. So in the process state diagram, you are going to say in what situation a process will move from the ready to running, from running to block, from block to ready under which events. So these are the different events that are written on this arrow directions. On this occurrence, this will it will enter into this state. On this occurrence, it will enter. So this is how you have to give the explanation. The first one is the ready state. Now in order to remember also, what I will do is, it is not simply that remembering running ready and blocked, you should also know which type of resource is attached with what uh, which type of state. So to make you remember the concept First thing what you do is for the ready always you think it is main memory. It is always what? Main memory for the ready state. All the processes are there in the main memory. So the processes are ready for execution. And for execution when it is ready, it is the job of the scheduler. That is scheduler is a program which picks the process from the ready state that is from the main memory and it will allocate to the CPU for execution. When the CPU is allocated for execution, we say the process is running. So that means the state is running here. When the process gets executed, the state is called as running. So remember that for running, you remember in this, it is always the CPU. When CPU is allocated to a process for execution, it becomes in the running state. Then look here, from the first thing is, we will we'll just see this particular sequence. Time being you keep it, uh, you just delay this particular point, I will not give the explanation. First I will start with this one only, scheduler picks the process. So let us take this as the first event. It takes from the second main memory and it will allocate for the CPU for execution so that it becomes in the running state. Now we will straight away go to this side now. It is getting executed, fine. And at the, during execution, you know that a process may request for some input output operation. So whenever it is making an input output request or when it is wa waiting for a particular input, that time it is, it is entering into the blocked state or you can call it even as waiting state. It is waiting. When, when the process, get, process gets blocked for the input. So one example also I'll give you when the process gets blocked. When we say that process is waiting for the input and it is getting blocked. Take any example. I'll write one command line from the Unix ls hyphen l uh, pipeline to wc uh, hyphen c something like this. So what does this command line do? ls hyphen l will give you a long listing of the files. Then this pipeline character you know the input that means the output for this program becomes the input for this part. Now WC is ready for execution, but still it has not got the input. Process blocks for input. Process is waiting for the input. The input is not at ready. Why input is not at ready? This input has to come from this particular execution, okay, from this process, from this particular command. And that output of this becomes an input to this. 
like this you have so many other examples it is not that always with the pipeline only the uh, input becomes uh, input uh, process blocks for input for any type of input or output request the process becomes block so we say it is in the block state when it is in the block state now for the cpu cpu is idle there is uh, no job for the cpu to do because the process is carrying out some input request is waiting for the input that time scheduler picks another process you can see the direction here scheduler is taking another process from the main memory and it is allocating to cpu for execution so this way what we can say is whenever a process is making an input output request it is blocked meanwhile another process can be given to cpu for execution so this is how but what will happen suppose if another process is given for execution meanwhile now you just assume that this process which was waiting for the input got the input now so once it is input becomes available it it is not given to cpu but it is once again what made to it is entered into the main memory this process is entering once again in the main memory the operating system sees that once it completes the input request in once the input becomes available for the process it will be moved to the main memory so that means the process is in the ready state once again this cycle starts from the ready it goes to the running from the running it goes to the block from the block it goes to the so here only in this you can see uh, the iro directions in two ways because whenever a process is blocked another process can be picked from the ready queue also when we say another process is getting picked from the ready queue will be will happen in another situation also suppose the process is blocked here that is one part sometimes what will happen now a process that is getting running is having a lower priority a process with higher priority is picked from the higher priority process is picked from the ready queue and it is given to the cpu so even in this situation what will the operating system do it will take that higher priority process from the main memory and it allocates to the cpu the existing process is preempted now so this is how you have to explain the complete process state diagram with an example but remember yeah for this also you can relate no input output devices so finally you can see how neatly the different parts of the computer has got what map to the different states of a process this is what we wanted from the beginning uh, students are learning right from the school which are the different parts of a computer they say it is cpu memory input output devices now if you look here at the state diagram for a process which you are studying in engineering once again you can see the memory is mapped to the ready state cpu is what it is to the running input output is to the block state so higher priority when does when when do you say a process has to be given a higher priority so for that i thought i'll give you an analogy i can give the analogy uh, right now for this uh, in this session also or when i teach you the priority scheduling algorithm yeah there it will be more appropriate for you to know why the cpu is taking a particular process from the cpu and allocating a higher priority process for that i wanted to give you an analogy in that particular session so this is all about the state diagram but once again i am telling you please add this attribute in the previous session list wherein i have mentioned the different attributes of a process in that particular list you need to add this attribute what is the name process state so there you have process id program counter list of uh, open files and open devices general purpose registers all those things are there in that to that list please add process state and this is what you have to do so in the previous session it is all about the process model definition that concept of process in this session the different states of a processes i have explained with a diagram so hope this session is useful to you thank you bye bye take care